Welcome back to Valley Boys TCG, I'm CK, and today we've got our very first in-person gameplay of Battle Spirit Saga. I will be piloting the Yellow God Beast or Two Cost Rush deck on the left, and my opponent will be playing a Red uh, Supernova Seagworm deck here on the right. Now I decided to keep my opening hand and get the extra draw. My opening hand wasn't the best, but I was going first, and I did have a Blessed Cathedral in hand, so I decided that's a really strong start, and I believe I did have one two-cost spirit that I could follow up with, uh, and just hoping he didn't outrush me. So we start off here going first. We get our draw step in. No core step, because going first, you do not get the core step going first. Now, I've been excited for Battle Spirits for a while. I've been looking into it. I have been waiting to finally get to play, so this is my first time my fir uh, first build even and so you see we start off with the blessed cathedral as i mentioned a while ago and my opponent matches me with the volcanic canyon we have nexus for nexus now this game battle spirit saga is very interesting because there's some very tricky resource management going on with it you have to decide whether it's smart to attack or whether to stay back and defend because all your spirits can be blockers as well and i decided to follow up the next turn with a second blessed cathedral now anybody who plays yellow knows the power of this nexus it adds a ton of ramping now you see i dropped the flying turtle which lets me look at the top card if it is a fabled beast i add it to hand and it is it is in the ravita so now we have another fabled beast in hand and you can kind of see my hand i do run the flame fish as well Flamefish works really well with this deck because it is a two cost and it has an incredibly strong removal effect on deletion. So my opponent sets a burst there. They get to do the extra draw and trash thanks to Volcanic Canyon and they play a second Volcanic Canyon just to set up for extra, extra cost reduction for their future spirit plays. So I get my draw step, we get our core and refresh step on and deciding what's the best play here i have some decent reduction with what i have on board right now um and we decide to play another fan, uh, another nexus of phantasmal paradise which at level one if i play a fabled beast which i do with the night cat sith night cat sith lets me look at the top two add two costs they are both two costs so that is double hit uh and then my opponent plays the star blessed in their burst because it was a when summoned effect but because of that i forgot to tap the paradise that I literally just played before the cat sith that was going to combo together to get me an extra draw and we decided to go in with the cat sith he's got nothing to block me unless he has some sort of removal magic that he wants to do during the flash step which he doesn't we just swing with one we leave one behind to defend because it will give us value if it dies in defending with the blessed cathedral and here we see the araptodon come down a one cost one reduction very strong red and then we see the blade dino parasaur a confront spirit so we know that that turtle is gonna die he placed another burst and now he's just moving his cores around figuring out what he's gonna power up to what since he does have four cores on that parasaur he's probably gonna yep swing uh, use the effect to send the soul core to reserve so it can get an extra draw. I am forced to block the confront, but thanks to two blessed cathedrals, I will ramp up two extra cores into my reserve because a yellow spirit was destroyed. Now, blessed cathedral was so strong in this matchup, but as you're going to see, this matchup is very back and forth, and that's what's so fun about battle spirits is that at any moment, the tempo can swing in either direction. You may think you have the game, then all of a sudden it takes a hard turn, and the comeback potential for every deck is extremely strong and you're going to see here. So he leaves the Araptodon up so that he has a blocker. We drop the Frieza Tall, another 2 cost 1 reduction. And we're deciding whether we want to just kind of go wide here. And I'm looking, I have plenty of Nexuses and Spirits on board to greatly reduce Spirit cost. And it looks like we are going to go into the Calamity Beasts from the starter deck. So with all the reduction on board, it should only be a 3 cost. Yep, 3 cost. And we have the 3 cores to get it to a level 3. So my 2 cost spirits will get a 2k boost. And then when he swings with the level 3 effect, he restands my level 2 spirits. Or sorry, my 2 cost spirits. 
And so we start off by swinging with the cat. He takes another hit to the life. So we got him down to three. Doesn't seem to be interested in blocking. Frieza Tall is another one that I like to keep on board because it gets us card draw, which helps us build up. And so we decided just to end turn there. Uh, the Calamity Beast, we did get to tap our Nexus because it is a Fabled Beast. So because of that, we did get the card draw when we played that Fabled Beast, which is nice. Now, I really think setting up the Nexuses early was really great for this game to really stay in it and keep the tempo, keep some very powerful turns on board. And see, now we see the Big Bang Energy, which is going to make this a very strong turn for Star Dragon. So we see the Imperial Thunder Dragon Seagworm and the Andromeda come down. Now, unfortunately, he missed a key step here. When Andromeda comes down, it lets him delete one of my Nexuses, and he forgets that. I think he's focused on the wide board and just setting up for defense that he misread or forgot to read that. Uh, and did not elect to destroy a nexus and we both missed it uh, there's again this is my first game so we're both a little new to the game so a few misplays are are going to happen um but that is a key one there that um may hurt him a bit and see so now we see him doing the parasaur swing because it has confront i'm forced to block with the freeze at all which has the effect when a yellow spirit dies draw a card Frizzatol has a weird uh, ruling that he does see himself die before he actually dies, so he does proc his own effect when he's deleted. And then, of course, we get the double ramp up uh, from the two Blessed Cathedrals, and now we've got a pretty good amount of cores. He's got a wide board, but uh, we have some pretty good setup here, uh, seeing that he is at three life. And I do have a Calamity Beast in hand. I can set up for a very nice turn. And I decide that I'm going to try to go all in here. So we see the Aravata. Which is good because when it's destroyed, I can play a two-cost spirit for my trash. Aravata is very strong that he can be a double attacker or a double blocker when used correctly. As long as you have a two-cost spirit in the trash. So now I'm just trying to decide what I want to do here. And I think we decide this is the best way to attempt to go for game this turn. So we put down the flame fish and we make sure to move the soul core over it to it so that it has its when deleted effect to delete something on the other side. So if he does block this, I can try to pop something on the opposite side. And we still have two cores there, so I think we just, we're about to swing. We decide, no, let's go ahead and we should be putting those two cores. Probably powering up our two spirits in the middle. Because we do want Flamefish to die. It's, uh, when Flamefish dies, if it has a soul core, delete something that's 4,000 DP. So we swing at the Flamefish and he just lets it through. Probably the smart play there. He doesn't want to block that. He'd rather block all my other spirits. So I swing with the cat. And I ask him if he's going to... And yep, he uses the burning force there. So burning force, it has the effect to delete two of my spirits with 3,000 DP or less. And that's fine with me because uh, Aravatal will trigger, letting me bring Freestall back in. And it will proc both my cathedrals for each spirit. So that's going to ramp me up four more cores. So now we've got cores on freestall. We've got extra in reserve if we want to go for burst effects or rather flash steps. So I ask him if he has a flash here and this is where I'm trying to go for game. So first we use the exhaust nexus for two. We have so much setup on board that it reduces the cost down to two. We get to get rid of the Araptodon, one of the blockers and the Parasaur. So that's good. And then I ask him for a flash step here. And he decides to not block and in decides to go for a flash here in the second trigger window and goes with the absolute ice shield. So the core he loses ends my turn there. 
that would have been game if, if, if not for that absolute ice shield I was swung with the calamity that would have restood both those level twos and we could have gone for game here and I had some other things in hand that would have let me deal with what he had on board but I would have been able to swing he would have blocked the calamity and then the other two one would be blocked the other go for the final life and I don't know if he looks like he forgot to put the one life back from the ice shield but it doesn't matter because here he goes for the supernova play and this is where I am in trouble and now here's another misplay because he did do the ascend cost but he missed the actual play cost he still had to play five to bring him out on board and you see that he didn't pay the cost and we both missed that which is probably a big mistake on my part because now that lets him also play out the Ares dragon so now he is in a much much stronger position that the, the tempo has swung back in his direction that supernova play heals him back to full life and when it swings right now he has enough cores to destroy my entire board so we went from a almost end game turn and then that ice shield completely turned it around this is what i talk about this game has great comeback potential because now he has some strong attackers he's wiping my board and he is fully healed again back up to five life so now I'm in a very big predicament, but because of those blessed cathedrals, I am now ramping up another four cores since two yellow spirits went down. So here we are, draw step. Oh, it's still his turn, sorry. He just swung with that. So now he passes turn, we get the draw step, core step, and our refresh, you see we have a ton of cores to work with. So. We just have to hope our hand is there. So I have to go for a pretty strong turn here. Um, I still have all my Nexuses on board, which is keeping me in this, honestly. So we have another Flamefish. So that'll help me deal with one of his. His, his canyons are boosting up his spirits on his, his attack phase. But right now, I believe the Andromeda is still a 4k, so Flamefish will deal with the Andromeda. So we go with the God Beast Behemoth. Now we're looking at the effect where it also counts the two cost spirits in the trash. And I have three, but technically one is a red. So we decide the red one doesn't count. I believe that's the correct way. It, it has to be yellow two cost spirits when counting reduction because it's counting the spirits on the two cost in the trash. So we pay the three thanks to the Nexuses. Uh, or yeah it should be three costs yeah we paid the three to get him on board that should be right and then we place two cores on him just two cores gets him the level two and then we have another calamity beast chaos pegasaurus uh we did have another one in hand we had our big spirits in hand so now we've got a board again because of those those blessed blessed cathedrals giving us so much and then of course we get the uh the draw because of playing the fabled beast here thanks to the paradise so now we're looking okay. We're still in the on the bad side because he has so much power with that seed worm. And he has the extra Ares on board because we for I missed to call him out on the fact that we didn't pay the actual cost to bring out that seed worm. So that's a mistake on my part. So here he swings the flame I swing the flame fish and I ask him for the Flash, he doesn't, so we have another exhaust nexus. We have enough reduction to play it again for two. And it'll put minus 3k to the tire board. And then we play a drowsy fumes for one to finish off the Andromedus. So that's one off the board, and another drowsy fumes. And here we're basically putting our whole hand down because we have a third drowsy fumes in hand. I had so much magic, you think I was playing L Luster in this deck. This is the two cost rush. And so now that we've cleared all his blockers, we can go in. The Calamity Beast will refresh the Flamefish. Flamefish will swing again. And now we are at a state where we have him back to one life. So that Seagorm Nova play, the Supernova play to fully heal and clear my board. Thanks to the Blessed Cathedral giving us so much core ramping, we are able to answer back and get us back to where we just were last turn. Now he has the ability to clear and he gets another supernova on board uh but unfortunately again he misses the trigger he doesn't get to do the full awaken effect to heal but he still has to pay the ascend cost and he should be deleting the other supernova and that's another missed 
mistake on this one. So here he swings, he has them both powered up, so it'll clear up to 10k. So it clears the Calamity Beast and the Flamefish, but there's nothing he can do about my Behemoth because it is 11,000 DP. So since I have no cards in hand, his best play here is to just sit with the other Seagorm to block the Behemoth to survive the next turn, unless this card draw is a spirit. And wouldn't you know it, this card draw is in fact a spirit. We get a Hippocampo, a Fabled Beast, which we power it up to full level, and then we have a Paradise there that we can tap because it was a Fabled Beast, gets us another draw, and we make sure that Hippocampo is 4,000 DP, so it can't be Burning Forced away. And uh, that draw off the Paradise gets us a Sword Angel, which again, we also go up to 4,000. This way he can't Burning Force anything. He could Volcanic Break one potentially with the card in hand, but that still gives us two attacks if he destroys one. He only has one blocker. That's the game. Yellow takes it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you come back for the next one.